last night I knew exactly what I was going to do today. Well, maybe it'll and just kind of dribble in it's gonna, as we sing. It's called just-in-time manufacturing. <laughs> yes. It's like it's like the automakers. Yeah, Sermons just sort of pop in there. <laughs> Especially if they've been... We'll see what happens. Premeditated. <laughs> this is a premeditated sermon. <laughs> once, doing once this I, on purpose. Once I read the scripture, it'll just all come back. So we've been talking about waiting. I know. I review this every day. Because some not some people are not with us every day. So we're doing this cycle. Through each week in Advent, we're thinking about Old Testament waiting, people in the New Testament who are waiting, uh, about our own experiences with, with Christmas and waiting and waiting for Christmas, preparing for Christmas. Um... What was the fourth one that we did just waiting yesterday? Waiting for thing. Waiting, waiting for, for God to, to answer resolve, some. God yeah, anxiously answer. waiting for God to show up for something, and then waiting for the end of time, waiting for Christ to come again. That's today, Friday, and we'll do the same in a, in a different way. We'll look at it again next week. So, so today we'll be reading Matthew twenty four, and so we're going to sing, "Christ is surely coming." That means. He is, isn't he? Right? Mm -hmm. Number 509, 509. Christ is surely coming, bringing his reward. Alpha and Omega, first and last and Lord. Root and stem of David, day and morning sun. Be your judge and save your nations near and far. See the holy city, there they enter in. All my Christ made holy, watch from every sin. Trust me once desiring all he loves to give. Come for living water, freely drink and live. Grace be with God's people, praise his holy name. Father, Son, and Spirit, evermore the same. Hear the certain promise from the eternal throne. Surely I will quickly come with Jesus come. Matthew 24. I got that wrong when we practice. From the eternal home, I sang throne. And now this time you saw, you saw. I didn't I sang sing throne, throne did yes, I? You did. No. <clears throat> I'm tracking the words and the choruses. <laughs> Plus that last line is a real... I need to get my glasses checked again. Surely I come quickly. Come, Lord Jesus. <laughs> come. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Jesus foretells destruction of the temple. Jesus left the temple and was going away when his disciples came to point out to him the buildings of the temple. But he answered them, You see all these, do you not? Truly I say to you, there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. As he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered them, See that no one leads you astray, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they will lead many astray. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed. For this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are but the beginning of the birth pains. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. 
and many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. There's a lot in here. The, the, the biggest puzzle, the biggest problem we have with this is that these things are all fulfilled. And Christ has still not come. Of course, that these are all fulfilled is a testimony in uh, an affirmation of what Christ has said, right? That he's truthful. But <clears throat> he's still not here. And that was a problem for the disciples because... It was not that long. They, they saw wars and rumors of wars. They saw love growing cold. They saw corruption increasing and lawlessness. They saw uh, the destruction of Jerusalem. 70 AD, uh, the, in the mid-60s AD, the uh, Jews had rebelled against the Romans. They're going to throw them out of here. It's God's will. He wants us to be free and be a powerful nation of our own, so on. That they thought they thought of that as God's salvation, politically, economically, and so then the Romans returned and destroyed. As when Jesus says, "Not one stone left on another," there was there were lots of remains of Jerusalem, but of the temple, the top of the Temple Mount, scraped clean. We talk about uh, artifacts of the temple. I, I think there was another one recently, in the last five years or so, some tiny little fragment of something. But the only one I can remember is that there has been found a little carved pomegranate, about the size of a penny. <laughs> I think that's from Solomon's temple. That's it. There might be a few more things from Herod's temple, from the second temple, as you call it. Um... Uh, and yet it was so thoroughly destroyed that there's there's nothing on that Temple Mount that was of that time. Just the just the foundation, just the mount where it was built. And now it's the Dome of the Rock and uh, and those things that remain, those walls and so on, those were built later. You know, uh, having seen that, would you be more or less likely to believe that Christ was coming again? Now this took place, and yet he's not here. I, I don't know. I, in practical terms, I don't think we're more likely to believe. In, in uh, theoretical terms, We'd, we'd say, oh yeah, boy, the world's really going to hell in a handbasket. Oh, look at this, look at that. Talk about lawlessness and the loss of love. Oh my goodness, the world's terrible. But we don't live as if that means that Christ is coming again. Or that he's coming soon. And, and his coming soon, that's, that's true for all of us. Soon doesn't mean within a matter of days. But soon, in terms of God's work, I know that Christ is going to come again and take me to heaven. And I'm 65 years old. So, you know, uh, within the time span that I spent at my last congregation, 20 years, uh, I'm going to be pretty close. There's, there's a pretty good odds that I will see Jesus face to face within that amount of time. Hope not. Uh, it'd be or, okay to be 90. As long, be okay as, to I, be my 90. as long as I go too. <laughs> yeah, two or first, right? Or first. <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, we laugh about that. We talk about that. I'm not sure that we live as if that's going to happen. That I'm going to lose you or you're going to lose me. But oh, that's a I fact. <laughs> From the day of our wedding, 
we knew and we said that was going to take place, right? That death would part us. Death will also bring us together. Death will also bring us together face to face with Christ and with one another and with all other believers in Christ to be with them and with God to be one forever and ever. Now, that is something that ought to change the way you live. That's why, that's why scripture says is in Revelation, when you see these things happening, lift up your heads. When you see these things happening, well, we see them all over the place. They saw them then, we see them now. Uh, it's, Jesus says, you see the signs of the season. When the, the, when the trees change this way, you know that this is going to happen. So now when you see these things, you know that the Lord is coming. When we, see, when we see lights showing up on people's houses and we see, uh, we hear music in the stores and, and we see uh, snow on the ground, we know Christmas is coming, right? And we got to get out our cards and get shopping and so on. Prepare. When we see these things happening, we know that Christ is coming. And we need to prepare. And so we search God's word. We, we live lives of prayer. We invest ourselves not, not in all the stuff that's going away, but in the things that will last forever, namely the people around us and their relationship with Jesus Christ. I was thinking about this this morning. I thought about maybe writing a blog post on it or something. You know, what we've, we've been watering our... This is for the first time in a long time we got a live tree. And just noticing how often we have to water it. And yeah, maybe in the past when we had live trees, maybe we didn't water it enough. This is true of us. Uh, we think, oh, it looks green. And we don't water. We don't check. Uh, we start out all right. We start out with giving it lots of water the first day or two, and then we forget. And then when we're raising our children, we start out with, with watering them, but then, then we neglect. And you know, there's a point where the tree stops taking any water, where where it's not drinking it like it was, and we call that teenage. And. And then we're surprised, oh my goodness, the needles are falling off already. If you know Christ is coming again, then you need to prepare daily with your children, with your grandchildren, with your friends and your neighbors, uh, with your siblings, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. This gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to, the, to all nations. And then the end will come. Lord Jesus, we have prayed with all the church of all time, come quickly. But are we ready? Lord, I know I'm ready for you to come today, but there are many who are not. Oh Lord, help us, inspire us, strengthen us, energize us. Those who are searching your word and preparing themselves, grant that we may by the leading of your Holy Spirit, prepare others and share with them the good news that this life is not all there is. There's more. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen.